Hey, hey, hey. Time for another Out of This World episode from Our Space. Being cheated on is not an easy thing to handle. Learning how to deal with a cheater can help you regain control of your life and help you decide how you want to proceed. While keying the cheater's car may seem like a cathartic reaction and fun, today on Our Space, we hear of those who took the high road. Up first, friends to lovers, lovers to enemies? I'm having trouble living with the fact that my best friend turned lover cheated on me and I need help. Sorry this is a long post, but I just need to get this out there and ask for help. I have been best friends with this woman for three years before we dated. When she got out of her long-term relationship turned toxic, we started hooking up. Shortly after, we started dating. Honestly, in hindsight, it was a red flag that we started hooking up after that, but the things she told me and how we felt about each other convinced me that this was okay. We dated for several months and every day was great. We did everything together to the point where we practically lived together. Our friends loved us. We went on so many trips and adventures and she made even the darkest days feel bright. I love this woman both as a friend and now as a lover. But she was a traumatized woman as her dad committed suicide a couple years back and her past toxic relationship affected ours. Her trauma with her past relationship was so bad that after our first big argument, she told me that she just needs a break from being in a relationship and focus on herself, especially with her views on mental health with her dad and all. She told me not to blame myself for the breakup. It was all her and that I was the right guy at the wrong time. And maybe we can work something out in the future. I was so polite and kind about the breakup regardless of the pain. I gave all of her stuff back with a collection of flowers and a note telling her to please take care of herself if this is what she feels is best for her. I feared the worst, especially with the remarks she said about mental health during our breakup talks. It was rough, and especially with my dad fighting cancer and me getting medically disqualified from the Air Force as a pilot, my dream job, I fell into this deep hole where I was so depressed, I felt worthless. But this, on the other hand, motivated me to turn this whole ordeal into a positive one. I started reading books, working out a lot more, and playing music again. From day one, I planned on trying to get her back, or at least be friends. But I knew that she, and myself, needed time to be apart and reflect on that relationship and life in general. The first month after the breakup was the only time we talked, and it was very brief. I talked to her a week after the breakup, saying that I just felt so beat up from all this, and I wanted us to work on things together. But she told me that what I wanted was too soon, and maybe things can work later. She just wanted to be alone. Then, a month after the breakup, I left a pot of flowers on her porch with a note asking if she wanted to get lunch, as friends to talk and get level with each other. I still wanted something because I didn't want to lose my friend more than my lover. Her housemate thought what I did was sweet, but she erupted and told me to respect her space. The message got through. I was stuck in limbo for the longest time, wondering what I should do. So many things were and are going on in my life that at some points I thought I was going insane. It didn't help that we had the same friends and were neighbors, so I would still see her all the time but I was trained to embrace the suck and keep fighting, so I did. Over the three months after the breakup, I lost 30 pounds and gained some in muscle mass. I started a band with my boys, and I even went backpacking up in the mountains alone for two weeks in the winter to clear my mind and get ready for the spring. I found out about her new man after winter. I thought things would be more friendly after winter break. I had changed for the better and thought maybe she would think I was in a better place and maybe we can try to return to normalcy, at least before we dated. But every time I would see her at a bar or at a party and would say hi, she would treat me like a stranger, quite literally saying that she didn't know who I was. I realized it when I noticed that she was always around this one guy and our mutual friend, now ex-friend of hers, broke the news to me. It was a friend we hung out with while we were dating. I was upset, but people move on. But then I found out that she started dating him a week after we broke up. I just got furious. The night I found out, we were at the bars with him and our mutual friend group. I kept on slamming tequila shots till my friend walked me home, where I got into workout clothes and went on a 10 mile run in the snow and ice. My mind was in a race. So many things going on in it. All those years being friends, our time being lovers, what we talked about during the ending of it, my whole journey through the struggle seemingly meant nothing. I ended up back in my house covered in bruises and blood from falling so much on my little venture. I took a shower and had the thought that I was still in so much pain and needed to do something about it. So I made the mature decision to text her asking to kindly F off and give me my space to be with my friends. Then I blocked her on everything. 
I'm not proud of that because I should have been mature and a better man to do nothing about it. But I just felt that I needed to do something to just cut that off. It was like going through the breakup all over again, but just with betrayal. It took me even longer to get over that. These past couple of months have been okay, and I even started talking to another woman. It felt good to feel normal again and to make things better. It was my freshman year crush. I'm a senior in college, and she reached out to me, and then we started going out on dates. It felt that my struggle, all that I've improved on, was finally paying off. But I was still cautious and mistrusting. I didn't want to get betrayed, hurt, or whatever again, so I took it slow. I didn't even know if I wanted to get into a relationship anyways. My caution paid off because she ended up getting back with her ex when he messaged her asking for her back after being apart for six months. Then she graduated and left college without even saying goodbye to me. I'm just left with this feeling that I'm not good enough and it has gotten me thinking about my ex-girlfriend again. I'm still deeply affected by it even though all of it is over and the bridges have been burned. All I want to do right now is focus on myself, hit the gym and play music, all that stuff but I still have nightmares and find myself staring off into the distance. I also recognize that love just comes out of nowhere and I want to be ready for that when it comes. I just need some help getting on the right path. Oh, OP, what you're feeling is completely natural. Experiencing breakups like that can be absolutely traumatizing, especially if you were best friends prior to starting a romantic relationship. It's hard to not have that support. A range of intense emotions may pop up when recovering from a relationship, all of which are valid. Some days, you might feel strong, happy, and confident in your decision. Other days, you may be overwhelmed by sadness and anxiety and question everything. All of these feelings, from feeling free and empowered to feeling lonely and missing your ex, are completely normal. Situations like this push us to focus on ourselves. Try to use your newfound time to focus on things that build your confidence and help you regain emotional balance. You deserve it, OP. It's easy to feel like you miss your ex-partner in times of loneliness, but keep in mind that you're strong. You are more than enough, and you'll get through this. Let us know some of your best post-breakup advice in the comments below. We've got one bit of advice from Enforcement X. Ah, mate, we all get dumped. That's what dating is. A cyclical cluster of dating and dumping and dating and dumping to infinity until we find someone who matches our energy, integrity, morality, emotionality, and relationship work ethic. I've been through a couple terrible breakups, mate. Just absolutely soul-destroying breakups. But here I am, happily married to the woman of my dreams. Never would have met her without going through all the crap. Keep your head up, mate. Next up, a cheater and their cousin sitting in a tree. K-I-S-S-I-N-G. I found out that he's cheating, but he's gaslighting me about it. So a couple of weeks ago, I was just curious about what type of stuff my boyfriend is sharing in social media and wanted to check his social media accounts. And weirdly, I noticed a girl that kept commenting on every post and photo he's been sharing. And they were kind of flirty and stuff. And when I checked her accounts, he's flirting with her in the comments and his friends and her friends are joking about it. I immediately asked him about it, who she was, and he said, she's his cousin. I found it weird that someone would flirt with their cousin like that in social media. But I thought, whatever. They're just a weird family, maybe, and that's how they communicated. Three days ago, I checked his social media again, but then I noticed a comment that his brother was replying to that girl saying, soon you'll be my sister-in-law, so I guess you should get used to us. I was choked. I took a screenshot and sent it to him and asked him about it, and he said, you forgot that I told you she's my cousin? I told him that it's really suspicious what's going on between them. So he sent me a screenshot, which was supposed to be between them talking about family and stuff, but I noticed that the chat is fake. I told him that I am not believing him. So he told me that he asked her to send me his message through Instagram. And when I checked it, it was her telling me not to worry about that. She's his cousin. I apologized to her. And the last text she sent was, no problem. After about 15 minutes, I replied with, thanks. In the morning, the same account sent a message. Do I know you? And I said, didn't we talk last night together? She said, when? So I sent her the screenshot and everything. After that, she said, Are you his girlfriend? I said, yes. We've been together since September of 2019. She just stopped replying. And after five minutes, my boyfriend sent me a message saying, What did you tell the other girl? I told him everything. And then I went talking to his best friend. And he said, Didn't you guys break up two months ago? He's dating a new girl. So what I understood is that he told his family and friends that we broke up with me and is dating this new girl. He got her social media accounts, so he's the one who chatted with me, not her, and he's panicking because he's losing her. He told me 
that I am an idiot and self-centered, and that I ruined this girl's life and his because now they are arguing. He didn't admit to cheating, though he feels it's all my fault because I found out about it and that he owes me and her an apology. I just blocked him. You're right to block him. I'm so sorry he did that to you. Please know that you are not an idiot at all, and you didn't do anything wrong. This is on him. He decided to ruin something that's beautiful because of his own insecurities. What he did was a very selfish act, and you must not blame yourself. Moreover, breakups aren't easy and infidelity hurts. It can have serious effects on your ability to ever trust someone again. Be patient and kind to yourself through the aftermath, as there is no right way to heal. Healing is possible, though, and you will feel stronger in time. You made the first brave step. You decided to leave and you blocked him. You don't owe either of them an apology. As you continue to center yourself, you're healing in big and small ways every step of the way. Let him continue on his dark path and you go on your merry way. You're moving on to bigger and better things. Our first community reaction comes from OKPOP1123. Okay F him, he's a piece of crap. Next one from DoggyMom76. Yeah, no, give her the receipts of y'all still being together so he doesn't turn it around and I would also tell his family that he's a liar. The OP chimed in. Of course I did. While I was messaging her, I sent her screenshots of our conversations and photos of us together after I told her that we were dating since two years and a half. She never replied. She was too stunned to speak or say anything. I feel sorry for her and for me. We both don't deserve this. Brenda Six added, So did he say he ever broke up with you? I would send it to his family, no lie. Just expose him. But I'm petty, so I don't know. Either way, he is awful. The OP puts in the last word. He never broke up with me or told me that he's thinking about it. We were a perfect couple in a healthy relationship, and I never noticed anything as we kept communicating and talking the same way as we always did. We go on dates every weekend the last two months, as we always did enjoy everything, as we always supposed to do, until I discovered this. I can't even imagine how he's done this and fooled me. Thank you for joining us today on Our Space. Before you go, be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you have feedback on today's content, please let us know in the comments below. See you next time.